0345 Are you trying to be funny? Because I'm all out of laughs. Uh, no, I'm not, but I know a man who is. Uh, a person in Harrow called Jonathan. Harrow. Oh, good evening, Mick. Yes, Jonathan. Uh, and a new dawn has broken, has it not? A, n- a new dawn? That was what Blair said in 97. Yeah, that's right. A whole new yeah. dawn. Oh. Yeah. wanted to touch on three things, but events have superseded me because, you know, I was watching the TV mm-hmm. and in the Birmingham uh, County, the mainstream media did not mention his name at all. Uh, Ahmed Yacoub. Who? Ahmed Yacoub. He, can you and your receptionist do some research on him? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. But thanks so for he, asking. <laughs> I've been following him on the YouTube for a long time. He's a proper solicitor, although he sounds quite um, uh, funny. Mm-hmm. But he's he was the independent, and he took away a lot of votes from Labour because you say the left fight amongst themselves. Yes. But he's very impressive. Have you never heard of him? Uh, what's his name again? Ahmed Yakub. He's a very rich solicitor, criminal solicitor. He does. You, he's got that. No offence. But he's got that funny uh, West Midlands accent that uh, Jet Phillips has, <laughs> you know, like the fish market accent. <laughs> no offence. Yeah, yeah. None, none taken, I'm sure. No, funny accent. But, mm-hmm. but he's proper solicitor and he got 70,000 votes. Wow. You know, so he's he's done a lot better than uh, Nigel Farage's disciples. Yeah, excellent. the Reform Party. I think they got zero, or more or less, there or thereabouts. Uh, but also, I had to say that uh, we have to say in Walkie Corky, London, yes. that um, Sadiqi Khan, congratulations to him, isn't he great? I mean, I hate him, but you have to say he's been... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, isn't he great? I hate him. Mm-hmm. Because that, did you did you see his victory speech? Uh, no. He had that very smug look when the elections were being... Yeah. Um, uh, announced, and then there was that elderly uh, lady Susan behind him, looking quite bemused. But um, <laughs> she looked you know. stunned. Yeah, like she'd been hit in the head with a shovel. But you have to say that he is great, and uh, he's the best Londoner since Diana. Now, look this, and we put yeah. him under four splints in a uh, the Trafalgar Square. But yeah. um, he's can, the can uh, say- he's the prince of our hearts. Can't stand him. <laughs> um, yeah. Look, can I say a couple of things not to be controversial about Rwanda and immigration? Okay, then. Because I genuinely was shocked this week when I was at the coffee shop, mm-hmm. and there were, and I was actually a bit distressed because there were three people on the table next to me, and two were elderly scouse women, and then a man with tattoos showed up. And you know what they were? What? They were self-described patriots. Mm-hmm. And they were talking very loudly um, about the fact that all of the bleeping immigrants, I don't know if they were directing it to me, or the, but they wanted a crowd, you know? They were sort of like directing their invective to the crowd. Yes. And they were saying, oh, the Romanians and immigrants and mm-hmm. all of this. And then the fellow with the tattoos came up and he said, and I quote him, I quote him directly to you, he said, my missus recently went to the, and he said, my missus recently went to the NSH, the NSH. Yeah, she, she went to a, she went to a NSH hospital, and oh. the doctor. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And the doctor said to her, "You are too big for the MRI scan, love." Mm-hmm. And then the tattooed guy said, "If I was there, I would have bleeping punched him." <laughs> he said that. That's true. Right. Yeah, and, but if she's too big for the uh, the bleeping uh, MRI machine, well, there's nothing you can do about that. And then there was more, like, immigrant, anti-immigrant stuff. He said he's a fan of Timmy Robinson and the St. George's Day, blah, blah, blah. And yeah. then one of the old scout women, and they're saying it very loudly so everyone on the street can hear them and sort of argue with them. One of the old scout women said um, she went, um, oh, why did they make her do an MRI scan? Because I've seen on TikTok that X-rays can do the same job as MRI scans without the harmful rays. Yeah. <laughs> Morons, isn't it? Like idiots. <laughs> well, that's where I get all my medical advice. TikTok. But do they have the, they have the same vote as a Nobel uh, Prize-winning economist or a top uh, neurosurgeon? Yeah, amazing. That, that's right. Their vote counts just the same. Hard to believe, but true. This is a problem. I got so distressed, I went and had like a hamburger, uh, two portion of fries. I was very uh, shocked by it. Mm-hmm. But um, can I just say a quick, a quick other thing that I, I told you, I'm, bo- I'm bold and uh, balding and obese. 
You're bo- and, bolting and obese, right? Yeah. In fact, the only two people in the uh, general uh, British celebrity world that, who are less charismatic than me are the number one Kia Starmer, who mm. I did vote for, actually. Right. right. And also his odd um, re- um, economist uh, chancellor woman, uh, Rich- Rachel Reeves. <laughs> if I'm honest. But I, I voted for them this time. Right. But anyway, so I went to a boxing gym and a little Sri Lankan walkie-cookie rude boy, he beat me up so badly this week. What? Hello? <laughs> no. Yes. Yeah. He beat me up in front of, you know, this sort of London rude boy culture that Sadiqi Khan has um, completely exploited to get all the votes and say, I'm your man. And he took a dislike to me and he beat me up. And I, I don't know if he's British or if he come to this country, but I thought it would be controversial. But you know what I thought? What? Deport him to Rwanda. To Rwanda. That's a good good idea. Somebody should um, get that uh, uh, that plan going. Somebody should uh, make a scheme of it. And can I just say one last thing quickly, please? Yes, quickly. Mark, very quickly, I'll tell you. I had to get my shed emptied. And um, this was four years ago by a chap who had just come out of prison. And he predicted that if the Rasa invade us, our youngsters are too weak to do anything. And he made two or three predictions. He said all of the tickles are having all of the kiddies. And um, he also said that the youth are very weak. But he, seriously, Nick, if, uh, even with labor, if things don't improve for me, I will leave. I'm serious. I'll leave the country. I will go to Mumbai or something. And if they take my house away, I'll go into sex work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> Well, that's that's where the money is for balding, overweight guys. Yeah, I'll do it. I can't. I can't tolerate all of this anymore. And the YouTube is saying that the butter, the butter is making our youngsters bisexual. And feminine. <laughs> True. It is. Well, I'm glad you brought that to my attention. Butter, you say. Uh, sadly, Jonathan, uh, that's our time up. But I appreciate the effort. Good man. Butter is making our youth bisexual. I did not know that. This is an educational show, no? No.